What's up everybody, Jesse here. Monday morning with the sun in my eyes. Um, and inside this garage, I got something special that we're gonna be working on today. Um, so I strapped up the YouTube and a mic and we're gonna try and get the uh, whole thing on camera today um, for my first basically documentation of a paint correction and a ceramic coating. Inside is what I think is a pretty cool car. Um, I'm excited to get to work on it and show you guys what we're getting into today. Uh, so without further ado, we're gonna head around inside and uh, get this thing introduced and start working on it. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, so what you're looking at here is a 2002 Subaru WRX in a custom uh, paint job, blaze yellow. All right, a couple of really cool things about this. Number one, um, in 2002, the United States only got the WRXs. It wasn't until a couple of years later in 2004 that we finally started getting some STIs. And this thing has a full STI swap, um, Brembo brakes, built motor, I mean, everything front to back. Um, it's got the roof vent up there, a lot of nice touches, bunch of custom carbon fiber around here, um, and some, you know, just really, really cool stuff overall and a, a super clean build, all right? Um, what we're gonna be doing today on it is a full detail with the paint correction and a ceramic coating um, to get this thing just that 10% better and as close to perfect as possible, plus have some long-term protection on there. Um, so I'm gonna pull this out. We're gonna start with the wheels and tires. We're gonna do a full body wash with uh, ONR, and then we'll pull it back inside um, we're just doing a one-step polish because the paint's not that bad and we're going to preserve as much clear coat as we can. And then we're going to be putting a two-layer ceramic coating on this as well as a, uh, a windshield coating um, from Glass Parency there. So uh, I'm going to uh, flip this camera around, get you guys outside, pull the car out, and we're going to get to work. Enjoy. All right, so, uh, so far I've gotten all the wheels clean here. Now this car is not like daily driven. It gets to live in a garage. Um, so it's pretty clean for the most part. I'm gonna be doing a rinseless wash with uh, O&R on this, which I have some other videos on the channel. You guys can check those out. Um, but before I get into the rinseless wash, I am just gonna do um, an iron remover just to make sure that there's nothing in there, maybe even stuff that I might not see and just make sure that we end up with, um, you know, really, really clean, clear coat before we start the uh, polishing process. So the iron remover has been on here for like a minute or two so far. And I mean, there's like next to nothing here. Um, really the only thing that I could see is around like turn signals and stuff like that. A little bit here at the bottom, like a couple of really tiny spots here and there. But for the most part, this paint is pretty clean. So uh, I'm actually not going to let this sit on here for too long. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, rinse the iron remover off. Get some of this stuff out of here and then get ready for the O&R. All right, so if you're new to the channel, <clears throat> Optimum No Rinse or O&R is a rinseless wash system. Rinseless washes basically allow you to clean the car. Um, without having to rinse it uh, when you're done. Um, this allows you to save water, um, not just from the rinsing process, but from not needing to fill up uh, two buckets. All right, um, as you saw there, I filled up one bucket um, with about four gallons of water. Um, I just kind of eyeball it 
at four gallons, uh, you're gonna add two ounces of the uh, rinseless wash solution. So that's half an ounce for every gallon. And uh, that's the ultra black sponge that you saw me put into the bucket there. Um, you really only need one. I like to have two in there. Um, just because as one gets dirty, I kind of drop it in there, let it release the dirt, stays beneath the grit guard, and then I can grab the clean sponge out and uh, get back to work. Uh, the O&R is also a lot safer than traditional soaps. All right, whether you're putting a soap on the surface or a rinseless polymer like this, the idea is to create some lubrication and do what you can to minimize the effect of pulling dirt off the surface, which is where scratches come from, all right? Um, along with that would be the drying process. Um, but one of the things that's unique about O&R is it doesn't just um, you know, soften the dirt on the surface, it actually encapsulates it, uh, puts it in these little bubbles, and then it starts to emulsify it. So whatever dirt it picks up, it breaks it down into smaller and smaller pieces and uh, lifts it away from the surface, actually separates it from the paint. Whereas with traditional soaps, all you're really getting is something that sits on the surface and softens the dirt, all right, um, and doesn't actually separate it from the, uh, from the pores of the clear coat itself. Um, I find the system to be extremely reliable and consistent, super safe for the paint. I just generally like doing it, which is you know, important for anyone cleaning cars, whether you're an enthusiast or you're doing this as a business. Um, but mostly it saves me, saves me time. Less drying at the end. Um, can get the whole thing dried in one towel. Less stuff to blow out of seams. I'm not chasing you know, soap trails and other water and drip marks and things of that nature. Um, I was pretty reluctant at first but over the last year or so, I've gotten a lot more familiar with it. And uh, I would say nine out of 10 projects that I'm doing start with, uh, with optimum no rinse. So I basically got the entire car covered there. Got my buckets here. I'm gonna grab one of these sponges, squeeze it just to the point of barely dripping. You don't want it totally wrung out where there's no solution in there and you don't want to take it straight to the paint you know dripping like this you want to find this sort of perfect balance at the point of just dripping like any other wash process you start from the top down get the cleanest parts of the car done first doing it the other way around starting with the lower parts means starting with parts of the car that are just generally more dirty and as you get through them, you end up picking up that dirt. And if you come up the car with it, you can uh, induce more scratches and marring into the paint. Probably doesn't look as cool on camera as the foam guns and all that stuff. And don't get me wrong, once in a while I do catch myself pulling out the pressure washer, having a little foam party in the driveway. But, uh, you know, if it's not absolutely necessary, and cars like this are a great example, they don't get very dirty, right? They don't have a ton of mud on them or anything like that. They don't require pressure washers. You know, save the time, save the water, get the O&R out, and just get to work. There's not much work here, as you saw from the iron remover. There's not really much embedded in the surface. And that's at a very, very fine level. This type of washing is a more general level of washing and there's just some light dust and a couple of bits of surface dirt here and there. Um, but nothing that we need to go crazy with, breaking out the little brushes and getting into everything. We're just gonna give this a good wash. We are gonna clay it and then dry it. And uh, that's one of the other things I really like about Optimum No Rinse or O&R is not only is it your pre-soak and your wash formula, but it also is a great clay lube. Provides a ton of lubrication, whether you're using a clay bar or a clay mitt, it's gonna allow that to glide across the paint really nicely. 
pick out whatever little bits of contamination there are. And then you can dry it. I flip the sponge over, get this clean side here, do this back windshield. You know, and right now it's the middle of April. This is my favorite weather to detail in. It's not too hot, it's not too cold. You know, in a couple of months, it's gonna be 85, 90 degrees out, you know, pretty regularly. And then what you have to start to consider is in terms of your working time, how much area you can cover before the sun and the heat start to dry everything out. And with soap, that means water spots. Nobody wants to deal with. Now, if you have deionized water, you're doing a little bit better, but uh, not everybody's got deionized water. If O and R dries on the surface, the spots that it leaves are not water spots. They're polymer spots. And so they wipe up really easily. Don't leave any trails behind, no residue. It's a really, really uh, unique and highly efficient, highly effective wash formula. And now there's a lot of people coming out with their own renditions of it. You know, there's been other stuff on the market for years already, waterless washes and things of that nature. McKee's is definitely the hot one right now. They're uh, N914 rinseless wash, which a lot of people really like. I don't have any experience with it. I have nothing good or bad to say about it. Um, but the buzz online is definitely that it's uh, a really, really great rinseless wash. But I just kind of see it as the way a lot of people are going to go moving forward. The more volume businesses are trying to do, the more valuable their time becomes. I also think that the more an enthusiast the more an enthusiast goes down the rabbit hole that is, you know, car care and car detailing, the more they'll learn about what's really the best thing for their paint. And we're all, you know, crazy car people. We all want what's best. This car's got some stuff on here now. I know he said he's a fan of uh, Break, uh, not Break, uh, Beadmaker by PNS. So the car actually has nice water behavior. Things come off the surface pretty easily. You know, the paint does look relatively good, shiny. You can definitely tell it's maintained. And that's my favorite stuff to work on. Stuff that's already being well maintained. I'm gonna do one more pass with O and R to soak this thing. And then we're gonna come through and clay it. Just to make sure nothing gritty's left in the paint. And uh, you know, we're not gonna pick anything up and, and do some scratching during the polishing process. Like I said, O and R, very, very high lubrication, makes a great uh, clay lube as well. So we've washed the car with O&R. Now we'll be claying the car with O&R, making our lives nice and easy and still getting a fantastic result out of it. Now what I'll be using to clay with is this clay mitt. This is by Work Stuff. They have this sort of like synthetic, rubbery, honeycomb kind of texture on here which does the exact same thing as a clay bar. As you rub it over the paint, ever so lightly, 
Removes that gritty texture. Might even be able to hear it. Think of it like exfoliating your face, you know? You shower regularly, you wash your face regularly, but every once in a while, you get in there with one of those, you know, pore strips or a mask or something like that to really clean out your pores, get a much deeper clean. It's exactly what this clay mitt or a clay bar would do. And you just dump it in the bucket of ONR, give it a good shake, release that dirt, get right back to work. Now this is something that as you're doing it, you don't need a ton of pressure, light pressure, and uh, straight back and forth motions. Use your sense of touch and sound. You can either feel or listen for any sort of gritty texture. And when the contaminants are removed, it no longer feels as gritty. Doesn't sound like you're rubbing sandpaper on the surface. It starts to sound a lot smoother. This right here, the Master Blaster Sidekick. This is a great little tool. Is it absolutely essential for detailing your car? 100% not. Will it make your life a hell of a lot easier? 100% yes. Really, really convenient little tool to have. Helps me blow out all these rails, round windows, mirrors, um, you know, and get some of the, uh, the little bits of water out of there. All right, so car's washed, clayed, dried. Uh, took a little break. Um, got my pad washer set up, polishers and everything. Um, actually already got into a couple of test spots here. You see I got my light with me. Um, so I'll show you guys kind of like the condition of the paint as it is. And you can see there's some swirls, you know, just from like washing. Um, you see up here on the edge of the spoiler a little bit. It's, it's not in terrible shape, but what we've been able to do so far is go from that to this which I think looks pretty good so far. I actually came here and, uh, and I, saw, I saw Eli um, ahead of time, came out with the polishers and, uh, and did a little bit of a test spot there um, and just kind of showed him like what one step of polishing could achieve and it got us like a really, really good result. Um, and like I said, that's because the paint's just not really in bad condition. I mean, it's a brand new paint job and it's only six months old on a car that doesn't even get driven every day. So we're actually doing work um, in a way where we're gonna preserve as much of the clear coat as possible by only polishing with one, uh, with one step. So I don't need to break out multiple pads. I don't need to break out a compound and a polish. I'm just gonna use my uh, yellow Rupes foam pads and the yellow Rupes polish, which is their lighter polish, and just knock out these uh, surface level swirls and scratches and the finish is gonna look mint before we put the ceramic coating on.
it's been a couple hours. This whole thing is polished, done, pads are going away, machine's going away. We're gonna just get into some of the like nooks and crannies here um, and give this thing like a final wipe down. We're using the glass parency panel prep because that goes with their coating. So it's gonna do one final pass just to make sure that there's no oils or any polishing residue on the surface. And then we're gonna come in and put two layers of their graphene coating. Um, now they give that a minimum of a five year rating. You can get more if uh, it's a car like this that stays in the garage, barely driven, well taken care of. And you can get less if you drive the car every day and you don't take care of it. But I have a feeling that Eli is going to get well uh, over the, the five year rating with, uh, with the glass parency graphene coating, especially in the double layer. We're also putting a layer of the glass parency windshield coating um, just on the front windshield. We're not doing the rest of the glass, so that's going to remain uncoated. Um, and the wheels are also uh, not going to get um, a coating. So um, going to basically set you guys back up on the tripod, do some panel prep. And um, I'll probably just do like a quick interior, just like vacuum and dusting for the guy. And then, uh, and then we'll get right into the coating. Here we go. All right, so actually, before we do the panel prep, I'm gonna bang out the windshield, um, just simply because I like to make sure that I'm done with absolutely everything before I start panel prepping the car. So I've got the glass parency uh, windshield kit here. All right. Um, really, really simple application. I've got this Scotch Bright pad. I've got their cream cleanser. All right, and the first thing we're gonna do is so I've got clean water in my IK sprayer here. Let's give this a little pump, Put a little bit of pressure up in there, and we're just gonna get the pad wet. All right, so I've got that wet there, and I'm gonna apply about a quarter sized amount to the pad, spread this over the windshield, and we're just gonna give this a quick clean. All right, so first things first, we're gonna rinse this with some clean water. IK Spray is doing double duty today. We'll just rinse this clean. Being a little bit more intentional about this than, uh, you know, when I'm spreading O and R over the paint, because here I need to get up, <clears throat> up close and personal to really make sure that that pressure is wiping away all of the cleanser. Last thing is just uh, some glass cleaner. Now for glass cleaner, any glass cleaner is gonna work. I like to keep it all in the family. So I do have the glass parency glass cleaner and this will round out our surface prep for the windshield coating. All right, so let's get this clean. I'm a two towel glass, uh, two towel guy when it comes to glass cleaning. I find that that consistently gets me the best results and the best results in terms of glass cleaning means no streaks. So that's my go-to. One towel for the product and one towel for buffing off any residue. More recently, I'm starting to see guys go with this like squeegee method. I'm curious about it. Haven't tried it yet. Also don't have a squeegee. Um, kind of just have something that works for me. But I don't want to be, you know, arrogant or ignorant. You know, if there's something out there that works better, I'm open to it. I'm gonna set these to the side. During your normal process, you're going to wash and clay it. Once you bust out the glass parency, you've got the cream cleanser. 
All right, once you've done the cream cleanser, give it a rinse with some water, follow with uh, some alcohol-based glass cleaner, all right, or just grab the glass parency stuff. And then we have two towels here. So it's basically an A and a B, kind of two-step application here. What I like about it is there's no guessing how much product to use. You've got a pre-moistened towelette and uh, there's no buffing in between the applications. Step A, put it on just like you would anything else. All right, I'll do this the same way I do my ceramics. Box it out and then come in and cross hatch it. Some common sense rules apply. Don't apply this in direct sunlight. You are working with coatings and fumes, so if you can do it in a ventilated space, crack a door or something like that, or if you're into wearing like a respirator or some type of mask, all good, simple, precautionary steps you could take. All right, so. Like I said, basically one minute by the time I get this thing down on the glass. Box this out. And cross hatch. Got some towels here. Got some panel prep. So I had mentioned it before, panel prep is going to remove any oils or polishing residue that might be lingering on the surface. And it's going to ensure that after we've polished out all the paint, um, what we are left with at sort of surface level is <clears throat> nothing but clear coat. Nothing but clear coat. I don't want anything interfering with our coating, messing up how it adheres paint. Don't want anything that's going to make our install more complicated or finicky. For this step, some people do opt for um, just an IPA solution, which is isopropyl alcohol, you know, depending on whether they buy, you know, there's a bunch out there, 70% alcohol, 90% alcohol, you know, they dilute it differently. And uh, more or less, it does the same thing. I am not going to pretend to be a chemist um, and know all the ins and outs of this, but it's not exactly the most ideal thing for your paint. And so the way I see it is if you're putting on a coating and that company makes a corresponding panel prep, just use that. Don't try and be fancy. Don't try and be a superhero. Make your life easier. Do the right thing for the car. And if you're doing this as a business, do the right thing for your customer. And not for nothing, put chemistry on your side. These manufacturers are designing everything to work with each other and play nicely. So that one thing serves as a building block for the next thing. Don't overthink it. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. Now some companies, they don't make a panel prep, right? That's okay. Make your own alcohol mixture, buy a panel prep from another company. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't match up. But uh, that's just my take on that.
All right, so we've made it to this point, got everything washed, clayed, corrected, and now just time to coat it. So what I've got here is the glass parent C ceramic coating with graphene technology. Single layer gets you three year durability, double layer gets you five plus, so they give you kind of like a window of durability at two layers. Um, any durability for coatings is gonna depend on how you drive the car and how you maintain it. Um, Eli's already got a bunch of stuff. I see a bunch of Adam stuff over there, foam cannons, like um, he's got the three separate buckets. So if he's maintaining the car the way um, I think he is, uh, no reason he doesn't get five plus years out of this. Um, goes on just like every other coating basically. Give the bottle a nice little shake first. And if I can get this top open, we're gonna take this applicator here and prime this. All right, that's a pretty generous amount, but for my first application, I like to just prime it a bit, get a little extra on there. And uh, we're gonna apply this in a cross hatch pattern. Give it two minutes to set up and haze. I set a timer for that, play no games, not trying to be a hero. And then we're gonna come in and buff it off. So what I'm gonna do is let that set up for two minutes. In that amount of time, I should be able to coat the remainder of the hood. And as soon as that timer goes off, we'll get to uh, leveling this and buffing off any high spots. Now with coatings, um, you can give it time or you can look for some visual cues, all right, as this starts to flash, you'll get this sort of rainbowing on the surface, which means the rest of the liquid is starting to evaporate and the coating is bonding with the paint. It's kind of hard to see with this lighting uh, and given the color. So just to be safe, I set the timer. Two towels, two different towels for this part of the process here. These red towels that you've seen me use throughout are the Drago towel from the Rag Company. This is also from the Rag Company. This is their pearl weave towel. Um, this alarm is gonna go off right now. All right, with this first towel, we're gonna come in and uh, this is just to level the coating. All right, so I'll do that sort of first third here. And uh, the red towel, the Drago, is a little bit more plush. It's a little bit more of like a pick things up and remove them type of towel. And so that will help us get rid of any remaining high spots after leveling. Now this little light here and the way I walk around with it is kind of mimicking um, having you know the sun overhead. And it helps me find anything that I might have missed. I think that looks pretty good. All right, let's hit this fender and uh, we're gonna keep it moving. All right, folks, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Um, that's a paint correction and a ceramic coating on Eli's STI swapped O2 Bug Eye. This thing has a near flawless finish, two layers of glass parentheses, uh, graphene coating. We've got the windshield coating on the windshield. And man, this thing looks uh, stunning and it's ready for the spring and it's ready for the season. 
and it's ready to be driven and enjoyed and it's ready to get dirty again and cleaned up and so goes the cycle of cars and detailing and, uh, and enjoying them. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, learned anything or just generally liked watching it, do me a favor and please hit that thumbs up button. Let me know that you like it and tell YouTube that they should show it to some other people as well. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. All right, um, coming up shortly should be the Forrester uh, full detailing series. I've got a, a wheel cleaning video to shoot on that. And then uh, we'll be getting into a paint correction and coating on that one as well. So plenty of stuff coming up this spring and summer from Ion Aesthetics. Again, I'm Jesse. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you on the next one.